Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between supply and quantity supplied. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up that total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exams. Let's get into the content. So first we're going to talk about the law of supply. The law of supply tells us that ceteris paribus, that means nothing else changes besides the price, other things are held constant. Producers are going to sell more at high prices and less at low prices. This is the law of supply. It's a direct relationship between the price and the quantity supplied. And that means when we graph it out, we are going to have a upward sloping supply curve because there will be a direct relationship between the price on the y-axis and the quantity on the x-axis. And the reason for the law of supply is because prices signal profits. And this can be difficult to understand for a lot of students. And that's because most of us are not used to being suppliers. And that's why it's easier to understand demand. But let's say we have a farmer and that farmer grows a lot of wheat. If the price of wheat drops from $9 a bushel down to $8 a bushel, it's tempting to think that the farmer is going to have to grow more wheat in order to pay their bills. But the fact is that farmer will actually grow less wheat. And that's because they will use their resources, land in this case, to grow other crops perhaps strawberries. And so they will decrease their production of wheat when the price falls. And if the price of wheat increases again back to $9 a bushel, that farmer moving forward will grow more wheat as a result of the price increase. And just like with demand curves, a market supply curve is going to come from individual suppliers supply curve. Let's say we have three farmers, Liam, May, and Joseph. These are three farmers that grow bushels of wheat. And we have tables showing the supply schedule for each of these farmers. And as the price of wheat increases, each of them is going to produce more bushels of wheat. And if we add up those three individual supply curves, that becomes our market supply curve. And we can see that if the price of wheat is $8 a bushel, Liam is going to produce 30,000 bushels of wheat, May will produce 15,000 bushels of wheat, Joseph, 45,000 bushels, and that means the market quantity supplied at $8 will be 90,000 bushels of wheat. And most of the time when you see supply, it will be graphed as an upward sloping curve. You have quantity on the x-axis, just like what we had with demand, and price on that y-axis, and an upward sloping curve labeled S for supply. And when you add up the supply curves for Liam, May, and Joseph, it gives us a market supply curve that is again upward sloping. And we see here in the market for $8 a bushel, we will have 90,000 bushels of wheat produced. Just like with demand curves, there's an important distinction that you must know between supply and quantity supplied. Here we have the supply curve all by itself and that entire supply curve is supply. It's every single price and every single quantity supplied within this market. And if we look at just the market schedule, which is what we call the table form of supply, the entire table is supply within the market because it's all the prices with all the possible quantities supplied for those prices. So the entire curve is supply and quantity supplied is one amount for a particular price. At P1, we go all the way over to the supply curve, drop down, and that gives us QS as our quantity supplied at P1. If we look at the table, we can see that at $6, the quantity supplied is going to be 30,000 bushels of wheat, and at $8, we have 90,000 bushels of wheat as our quantity supplied. So again, quantity supplied is one amount for a particular price. And over on the graph, we can see that an increase in the price from P1 to P2 is going to cause movement up that supply curve and give us an increase in the quantity supplied going from Q1 all the way up to Q2. And Q2 is larger because we're further away from the origin where we have our zero. And if we have prices decrease, that's going to cause our quantity to decrease as well. But a change in price changes quantity supplied. It does not change the entire curve. And that's why we say price does not change supply. Make sure you know that because there may be some tricky questions about this distinction on your exam. And on our market schedule, if we change the price from $6 a bushel to $8 a bushel, that will cause movement down this supply schedule from 30,000 bushels up to 90,000 bushels a week. But if there's a change in the quantity at every single price, that will be illustrated as a shift of the supply curve. And when there's a shift, we actually call it a change in supply. And just like with demand, a rightward shift is going to be an increase. 
and a leftward shift, and that will be a decrease in supply. Over on the market schedule, a change in supply is illustrated as a change in the quantity at every single price. So an increase in supply will be an increase in the quantity of bushels at every single price. And a decrease in supply will be a decrease in the quantity of bushels at every single price. So next we're going to look at the determinants of supply. These are the things that actually shift the supply curve to the left or to the right. The first one is the price of inputs. These are the costs of the raw materials and the resources that go into the production for a particular product. Let's say that the price of fertilizer has just decreased. That means that farmers will be able to use more fertilizer and that will increase their production of wheat, shifting the supply curve to the right. But if that price of fertilizer increases again, we will see a decrease in the supply of wheat. And that's because there's an inverse relationship between the price of inputs and the supply. Our next supply curve shifter is government tools. We have three government tools and those are taxes. That's where the government charges a business for producing units of a good. We also have subsidies. That's where the government pays a business to produce. And we have regulations, which vary by business. Per unit taxes are going to decrease our supply. Subsidies, where the government pays a business to produce, are going to increase our supplies, and regulations generally will decrease supply. Let's look at some examples. Let's say that the government puts a per unit subsidy on wheat. That means that farmers are going to be paid by the government for each bushel they produce. That would mean we would have an increase in the supply of wheat because farmers are going to find it more profitable to produce wheat, and as a result, they'll produce more. If on the other hand, the government were to charge taxes on wheat or perhaps have a regulation that bans a particular type of fertilizer, that's going to increase our cost of production and we will see a leftward shift of the supply curve for wheat. Our next supply curve shifter is the number of sellers. Some people call this competition. If we see an increase in the number of farmers producing wheat, we will see an increase in the supply of wheat. If some of those farmers exit the market, we will see a decrease in the supply of wheat. And that's because fewer farmers are likely to produce less wheat. The next supply shifter is technology. Technology is generally going to increase supply. Let's say that farmers get new tractors that are more efficient than what their old technology was. That new technology is going to increase productivity and with it, we will see an increase in the supply of wheat. Next, we have the price of other goods. Farmers can produce lots of different crops, and when the price of those other crops change, it can impact how much wheat is produced. Let's say, for example, that the price of strawberries decreases from $7 to $5. Wheat is now suddenly more profitable than strawberries. That means some farmers are going to stop growing strawberries, and in the wheat market, we should see an increase in the supply of wheat, and we will see that as a rightward shift of that supply curve. And if the price of strawberries increases to $7, some of those wheat farmers are going to exit the market to grow those strawberries, and that's going to result in a leftward shift of the supply of wheat. And those are our five supply curve shifters. And just like with demand, I would not advise you memorize all these, just practice applying them. Just read the question and think about how these changes would impact the suppliers of the product in question. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about shifting supply curves and the difference between supply and quantity supplied. If you already have learned about demand curves as well and you're ready to practice, head over to reviewecon.com and play the supply and demand game. And there you can practice the difference between shifting the curve and having movement along the curve. If you still need more help after that, make sure you pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exams. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.